From Knight Rider to the Transformers, the cars of film and TV hold a special place in the hearts of both gearheads and movie buffs alike. So it should be no surprise that a collection of this Hollywood horsepower would be a huge draw for fans from across the globe. But you don't need to go to Hollywood or even New York to find more than 80 of the most iconic cars from TV and film. Instead, head about 90 minutes to the west of Chicago, to the Volo Auto Museum here in Volo, Illinois. In fact, the museum has become so well known that when studios wrap a production, Volo is the place they call, knowing full well this is the premier destination for retired car stars. But this reputation wasn't born overnight. In fact, they needed the help of a certain caped crusader for people to start taking notice. We were approached by George Barris. George Barris is the uh, original builder of the original TV series Batmobile, and that was our first Hollywood car. Um, it proved to be you know, a favorite of the public. It was drawing a lot of attention and you know, bringing people into the museum. Uh, so then we started expanding from there. And expand they did. Soon the General Lee, Michael Knight's kit, the Monster Mobile, and many more became part of the collection and finding the cars became easier and easier. To keep visitors excited, the museum's owners constantly turn over the pieces, making sure visitors return to see what's new but it's the first time visitors that are left with the biggest impression. We had just had a sleepover, so we're like, yeah, sure, I guess we could do that. And then we got here and it's all like, whoa, that's so amazing. A lot of like old stuff and you usually don't see every day. It was really cool. Many of the movie cars have a very unique story behind them. Case in point, Grease Lightning. This is the original car from the movie, but when the museum owners actually tracked it down, it wasn't in what you would call showroom condition. Uh, it was at a body shop and it turned out to be it was the actual car. Uh, the guy was hired to restore it by a collector from New York and uh, the collector passed away. So he wasn't getting paid to restore it anymore. He shoved it outside and there it sat for uh, it was about three, four years that it sat outside. Another Tinseltown icon left for dead in the desert is the Ferrari Daytona from Miami Vice. And the leather interior just shrunk. It looked like a shrunken head. The seats were so small just from sitting out there in, in the elements, you know, getting rained on. And, uh, the sun beating it. In their own way, these high revving pieces of memorabilia are just as famous as the legged stars that drove them. And with fame come fans from far and wide, each with a personal favorite. Definitely the Batmobile, uh, Grease Lightning, pretty phenomenal. And the Munsters is a really great setup too. Dukes of Hazard, Kit, I mean, how can you go wrong with those? Those are great. The Dukes of Hazard. So it's just, you know, my era when I grew up. And My favorite cars uh, from a movie. Uh, return to future. This is one of the Aston Martins that was used in the James Bond film Die Another Day. And as you can see, it drives perfectly well, which shows you that most of the cars here at the Volo Auto Museum go just as well as they show. The Eleanor Mustang, that's uh, you know, that's a big block four speed. I mean that thing that thing really rocks. <laughs> The Black Beauty we have, I actually drove that to a few car shows uh, over the summer. Took it out and drove it. And as more and more cars are driven from the bright lights of Hollywood to the quiet town of Volo, the fans are sure to follow. But one thing's for certain, these movie masterpieces certainly age better than the stars who sat behind the wheel.